She's a well-known supermodel. Now Cara Delevingne is taking on her first starring role on screen. I talk with her about her coming-of-age film, Paper Towns. She's gone. When was the last time you saw Margot? You were with her her last night. It has to mean something. There's something in Margot's window. She left little clues, like breadcrumbs. I found something. I think she's sending you a message. Come find me. Cara, I know, obviously, we all know who you are from, from modeling and acting, but you actually set out to be an actress. That's kind of what you wanted to do, and modeling kind of just fell into it. Is that correct? Yeah, that sounds about right. When you took on this role, it was something that you saw in yourself? Sure, I think that's important as an actress to an actor to, um, you know, connect with the part. Um, you've got to make it real. I think that's the, what the best actors do is draw from themselves. Um, so, yeah, I connected with Margot. You actually signed on before the screenplay, obviously, Fault of Our Stars, you were in that. To be back on one of John's stories meant a lot to you. Yeah, I mean, I had a I had a really great experience working on Fallen Our Stars. You know, it's like the same teams, the same screenwriters, the same producers. You know, obviously, John wrote both the books, and uh, um, and uh, I read Paper Towns on set during Fallen Our Stars, and I had a lot of time off while Hazel and Gus were off falling in love. <laughs> I had like time when I was just lying in my hotel room bored, so I read a bunch of his books, and I I really fell in love with Paper Towns. I loved Quentin, and I really related to to Margo as well, and. Um, so when they asked me if I wanted to play the lead, I said yes before they could, you know, finish the sentence. Yeah, well, Margot's a very interesting character. That's what I wanted to ask you about how you did relate to her, because she doesn't really have her future mapped out. I've never been a person to really um, map out things or plan things, so I guess that's something we have in common. But again, you know, I think, you know, we're similar in the ways, like, we love adventure, and she's... She doesn't, but the thing is about Margot, she doesn't really think about the consequences of things. I think that's what she has to learn about. And from Q as well, it's not all about planning, but it's about, you know, thinking how you affect people and, and seeing that. And you're moving on to something quite different after this, Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. Is that something you kind of would like to try out all these different types of things and genres? I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. I've always wanted to act, so I want to do everything. Uh, you and John, you've become kind of close friends, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, you've worked on a couple of movies. Yeah, and he's yeah. one of those novelists that doesn't. Uh, just turn over his novel. He's on set with you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and, and he, you know, the great thing about John is that he's not, uh, you know, he's not all over you about trying, you know, to, about, wait, this, you know, didn't, this wasn't exactly how it was in my book, you know, but he's just very concerned about the themes and the general feeling of yeah. the movie to be, you know, similar to the feeling that you get reading the book. He's there for support as well, like, yeah. so much. So, you know, everyone's like, did he tell you a lot about how to be the character? It's like, no, he kind of left it in our hands, which was so nice. Yeah. Um, but was there to kind of, you know, help us when we needed it. Yeah. Are you a fan of some of his books? Obviously, you read Paper Towns. <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't think I would have wanted to do the film if I wasn't a fan of his. Um, but I think his writing's amazing. I think he speaks to young adults like no one else can. It's, it's, it's just an amazing skill. Meanwhile, you can catch her in Suicide Squad in theaters next August. Mike Wolber. NBC News.